Hii mafuriko tangu tangu nianze kuisi hapa inaenda inaruda. Kuna miaka ingine imesaa pita bila mafuriko. Maji lingia Jumamosi kwa nyumba kitu kama saa tisa usiku hivi. Hii msitu ilikuwa kubwa. Ilikuwa inafika pale inaitwa Koyo kwa Lami. Alafu kwa sababu ya uchumi watu wakasaana sasa imekuwa imepungua ikakatwa mpaka pale tuliingilia ndio tukaingia hapa ndani msituni When it rains it pours Almost every rainy season Kenya's Nyando River in Kisumu County breaks its banks drowning crops displacing livestock and bringing misery to hundreds of thousands of people Mimi vile mnaniona nimepotesha kuku zangu kama kuku 40 nilienda na maji nilikuwa na mambusi kwangu iko hapa nyuma nilikuonyesha uliona hizo mambuzi zilikupa mbuzi nne sasa ngombe ndio ilisinda maana ke ngombe siwezi sema uongo ngombe nilitulitoa na manjao ilikufa mbili hizo ni mali zangu zote na ukiingia okay, mahali kwa upande wa mimea nimepotesha mimea mahindi eka mbili mtama eka mbili pia Nilipanda mboga. Hiyo mboga pia ilifurikwa na maji. Sasa tumebaki hivi tu na nina watoto watano na mke na mimi wote wa saba kwa nyu kwa nyumba tutajisaidia kuvipi. So with the heartache accompanying these annual floods the result of an unavoidable natural disaster or is it the byproduct of a man-made catastrophe the issue regarding the current flooding in the country is quite devastating for the first time we are uh, witnessing approximately 286000 people affected and that devastation could be due to diff different reasons the natural one is basically the fact that we have had excess rainfall occurring at a very short span of time but that is the the mother nature point of view but we can see the imprints of human activities in the devastation for example we know that as population increases pressure is put on land unfortunately Mother Nature has a way of punching back. The damage done to the Nyando River's environment upstream ends up on the flooded doorsteps of those living downstream. Vua ikinyesha kule juu huku nale hivi unaona hii maji inakufa. Maraka hii nyando inatoka huko huko nale hivi hadi hapo. Sasa maji ikiingia mtoni wa nyando sasa inakuja mpahali hadi hapa. Papo tunapata sida sana. Mwanake inafurika inamalisa mimea zetu, inamalisa mali zetu zote, inaangusha hata majumba yetu. Vile ume, umeona sasa. We are heading to Kakola Ombaka village. But instead of cars and trucks, boats now ply this route, and a vast lake now covers what were miles of fertile fields, as the village chief explains. A number of acres has been affected. As you can see now, this was uh, this place was planted maize, maize, beans, and even sugarcane. But right now, they have all been destroyed. Uh, the area which has been affected with floods is about 40 kilometers squared. 
the population is around 8,000, according to the statistics. So, so far, 3,000 household families have been affected. These marooned crops are all that's left of acres of productive farmland, and their destruction signal hard times ahead. So do the dark clouds filling the horizons. These flooded houses are mute testimonials from the thousands of people who had to flee with their lives. Dorothy Anyango is now trying to salvage whatever she can after the deluge. Joseph Mukasa hopes the brown waters are now finally receding. Maji likuwa nafika hapo wakati ambao ilikuwa mara ya kwanza ilifika hapa na kwa saa hii imerudi paka level ambao sasa unaona kwa hivyo saa hii imepungua kidogo kuna wakati ambao itafika chini kabisa ambao naweza kurudi na kama nimeweza pata pale pengine pokukaa naweza aenda tu kukaa lakini since this is the this is the only place i can stay so I can just turn here, return, turn here to, to stay. I have nowhere to stay, but only here. But a week after talking to us, Joseph's house was swept away. <laughs> And what happened to the rest of the people who once called these flooded houses their home? They are all now marooned in this church, home to hundreds of the displaced. Iti ikiwa hivi tunapata malaria sana na mambo ya kuwara na kutotapika inakuja. Kwa sababu ya maji mbaya, najua saa hii hata macho hakuna, na macho yenye ilikweko sasa imekuja juu na inaungana na maji. Sasa ni maji ni chafu. Hata jana, karibu turudi kumakuetu. Na ndiyo maji ilijaa, asubuhi tukiamuka hapa tuende tutasame manyumba zetu, maji imejaa kwa nyumba. Hata atuwezi enda huko sasa. Imekuwa mingi, ndiyo ni kama imeanza kujaa sasa. You know, as the rivers drain into Lake Victoria, they carry a lot of silt. When they reach the, the river mouth, they find that they will deposit silt there. That means that the, the mouths of rivers are being closed, and therefore the rivers are not able to discharge their water into, the, into Lake Victoria as naturally as it should be. So you find that the water backs up to the land, and as it backs to the land, then it causes the devastation in this area. Coming up. What can the flooded villagers do to save themselves? Maybe a blind man can lead them out of their predicament. Mimi, hata pale unaona tumeka hapa, unaheza ona kama imenuke, ni kama highland kidogo. Na hata ukiangalia hapa, kuna watu, watu wa area majiranu zangu zote waliama. Na mimi ndiyo nilibaki. It starts with a few drops, then turns into a deluge. Rain in the Nandi Hills awakens a sleeping giant, the river Nyando, which quickly becomes a raging torrent as it winds its way downstream through the now degraded tropical forest. When population increase, then degradation increases as well. But unfortunately, that is the trend because the 
land-based resources are finite and consequently you find that as the demand for such resources increase, uh, population settlements move into marginal areas. They move into forest zones, which should be preserving the water catchments. They move into areas of steep slopes and therefore causes massive soil erosion. They move also into wetlands, which are supposed to, to reduce the flood when there is uh, excess rainfall. On the vast plain bordering Lake Victoria, the now mighty river bridges its banks, flooding miles of farmland and bringing torment to hundreds of thousands of people. The lowland regions around Lake Victoria is fairly flat, but it is also densely populated. Ewan finds that that is the area of fertile soils. The local people also like to live near the lake because they are fishermen. And consequently, their livelihood revolves around the lowland zone. This becomes quite significant because after the floods, then you find that they are heavily affected. Kenya's grim government statistics bear this out. Over 70% of the people around the Nyando River wetlands live below the poverty line, forcing many to further degrade the ecosystem in a struggle to survive. There is a Jagobani, of which we have managed and, and, and that reduced. There was a logging. It, this, uh, this one goes to timber. There was a uh, timber, which, have, which of we now we have overcome, overcome it. There is no timber harvesting here. And then, majorly now, I, as we can see our forest, earlier on you, you, you would have not uh, seen 10 meters, but as per now, grazing is a big challenge. But Francis Omudi had the foresight to see what needed to be done even though for the last 12 years, he's been blind. Mimi, hata pale unaona tumeka hapa, unaesa ona kama imenuke, ini kama highland kidogo. Hii wakati nilipo jenga nyumba yangu ya kwanza, haku kuwa hivi, ilikuwa chini. Na haku jua kwamba mafuriko itakuwa mbae. Na nilipo ona nyumba yangu ya kwanza imeanguoka. Eh? Nilipo nikaansa, nikagundua hii siri, Ya kubeba tu mchanga, mina beba tu mchanga na besen, huko pale, na mina leta na weka. Naenda na leta tena, na besen, na weka. Na, na weka, na weka, mpaka, ikaansa, ikakua, ikakua island, kidogo. Alafu nikajenga ya pili. Nikajenga ya pili, maji ya kikuja, tena ikaingia, mpaka ndani ya nyumba. Ha, nikaona kumbo hii ajatosa. Nikaansa tena ku nikaendelea kukubeba mchanga na beba tu huko nalenda na labda huko naweka sasa hii nyumba ya tatu hii ndio niliona sasa imekuwa juu kidogo mpaka hata sasa hii tunaweza pata pale pa kukaa na kama singeweza kufanya hivi ningi ningi kwa hapa kwa sababu hapa ni ni kama bahari na hata ukiangalia hapa kuna watu Watu wa area majiranu zangu zote waliama na mimi ndio nilibaki. Francis didn't stop after raising his home. By growing his own forest, he realized he could weather the perennial floods. Ni miti nilianza kupanda kwa sababu Niliona mafuriki, mafuriku hii, il, 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 niliona kama iko na ngufu nyingi sana. Tukipanda miwa, inaenda nasu. Tukipanda maindi, inaenda. Kila kitu tumepanda inaesa kuaribu. Lakini hii miti, nilipo jaribu tu, niliona 
Kwanza nilipanda miti alufu moja, nikaona imefaulu. Francis' wife soon became a believer in his homegrown solution to the punishing floods. Nesa fanya hiyo kazi ya bawa hata mpaka za tatu ya uziku. Sababu tulikuwa tunanunua hiyo mbegu na saingine tunazindo kupata pesa. Sasa mimi nilikuwa naweka seeding hapo. Kwa nafanya kasi ya kuweka mbegu hapo. Tunafanya parking kwa mapaket. Ikisa kuwa kubwa, sisi tunapereka kwa samba. Mimi nafanya kasi ya ufufi. Saingine nafanya tu kasi ya kutengeneza mat na kasi ya amari tu kidogo kidogo na limia mtu saa nyingine ndio nipate usaidizi sasa hiyo ndio naendelea naye kulisa naye mzee na pia kazi yetu hiyo ya miti nilikuwa nafanya nikisama lisa mimi nawacha yeye sasa akijunga chunga hiyo zamba mimi naenda kutafuta na natafuta tu nikipata kidogo mimi narudi to tena nimetuingie tu kwa hiyo kazi yetu ile sida tunapatanga wakati tu, wakati wa kupanda miti kwanza ni pesa kama ninaweza pata pesa nipande hata lufu tano mara moja mafuriki wesi sumbua what francis discovered on his own is backed by scientific evidence forests slow down the runoff of sediment and they hold more water than farms or grasslands tree roots also absorb water from the soil enabling it to store more rainwater during floods. It is possible now to have woodlots. It is possible now to have more cover in our areas and reduce soil erosion. One sees a situation in which if we improve our land use system, then nearly 13% of the problem will be reduced just by managing land and land is privately owned so we cannot invite government to our pieces private land so the people just need to be aware that they own the land but the manner in which they use the land affects many people away from that land and i think that calls for awareness and increased participation of individuals because they are the owners of the land but for big projects the government has a big role to play in neighboring magina village athen dikes have turned the tide for local residents protecting them and their farms from the annual floods hey yo hey uh... lawrence lucy can now graze his cattle during the rainy season but that wasn't the case when he lived in the wrong side of the tracks nyaka ne gimi wa dakini wasibi do gikwe do wasibi do maber mukalo makmana na dak ba the kocha samana dak ba the kocha do pong mangeny ma utega ngwen duto no go pin kana se go utega pin e makun na duo go ba the koni ko nyaka na akanyo asibi do gikwe na asibi do maber moka sene na chandruok mora hinya o me pura nya lo kwa serikal mono me konyo wa ka ge konyo wa podu jo gwen wa ka biro yu chiemo biro pido yende biro pido gik mangey mama isa wenya lo biro maber moloi we have seen major improvements in the budalangi area where dikes have been constructed in the last uh, last two decades and they have improved the lives of people there now the siltation rate in the budalangi area has also been controlled by conservation of the of the catchment so the amount of sediment coming down to budalangi has decreased which means that the conveyance of the channels are more efficient now this has not happened in the sondu and the and the nyando escarpments uh, catchments have not been sustained and therefore we are beginning to see increased sediment discharge coming down and silting the channels and therefore reducing the conveyance of the river under those circumstances even if dikes are built what it means is that we cannot compete with the rate of siltation and therefore the use the, the efficiency of dikes 
decrease rapidly because of siltation. The result? Almost every year, the residents of Kakola Ombaka village have to depend on food aid because their crops have been destroyed. But the people are clamoring to get their hands dirty and find a permanent solution. <laughs> There is need now to completely shift from disaster management to risk aversion. We deal with the risk before the disaster comes. Secondly, I would probably suggest that there needs to be a major land use analysis in the entire basin. There is no need of dealing with patches of areas within the catchment. Let us have a total complete catchment analysis and see areas that needs to be rehabilitated. We must begin to look at the disaster caused by floods as a development issue and not a humanitarian issue. And if nothing is done to protect both the highland forest and the lowland swamps, another disaster will surely come, just like the April rains.